السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Let's greet you for everyone Today I need to present about the abstract I'm Qasim Hamad Khurshid Hamad Murad from University UT and PhD student information system The our workshop today is about the abstract and through this lecture I need to explain what is the abstract, why we need to write abstract, how we write abstract, and how we can make a good abstract, and so on. So at first, let me explain what is the abstract. Abstract is a short piece of a text that places it at the beginning of the dissertation or thesis to provide an overview of that particular research and investigations. It means every article, every paper, every thesis of what we have the abstract. Usually abstract between 150 and 300 words in length depending on the length of the assignment, because sometimes become 500 words. An abstract is brief summary of your published or unpublished research article. It means typically no more than one a paragraph, but sometimes, as explained, it depends on the assignment, sometimes become more than one paragraph. But generally, the abstract every time become one paragraph or maybe seven uh, topic sentences. Abstract allow the reader to quickly determine the most salient information in a piece of research without having to read in depth. Through the use of a keyword, abstract also allow for better publication indexation in libraries or online search engines. So give me one second because my line may be not good. So I disable the camera, sorry, because of, of my internet. So just now we say, we say there is a abstract, okay? And abstract what? A reader, a law reader. A law reader for what? For quickly determine the most silent information information in a piece of uh, research without having read in depth. So through the use of a keyword like what? Like uh, your uh, dissertation, your thesis, your, key, your article, your paper, sometime uh, maybe you have uh, proposal, all of them, we can make abstract. But through the use of a keyword, the abstract also allow for better publication, better publication. So explain in the future how the, the abstract with a good keyword become uh, better for publication of our article, especially publication in the indexations library or online research. So, what is the abstract several factions? Exactly the main faction, or sometimes we say the general faction about the abstract. The first one, abstract provide the reader with a quick summary of your paper. Okay? Quick summary of your paper or article allowing them to decide whether to read the full paper or not. So it means good abstract give you a chance for your article to become publication, more citation, easily distributed among the academic student and academic uh, platform. So the first factions of the abstract is provide reader with a quick summary of your paper or 
of your thesis of or your dissertation or article. So decide, let them to decide whether read the other's paper or not. The second faction is in more detail. It means abstract, yet the reader ready to follow the detailed information, analysis, and argument in your full paper. In our full paper, we have argument, we have analysis, we have detail about our, our method, our, our result. So in the abstract, must be get what? Get the reader, the reader must be find what must, must be ready to follow the detailed information about your article and your uh, paper. So later, an abstract can help reader record key point from your paper. It's very important. If your abstract strong, meaningful, explain all your article inside one paragraph as an abstract, so it means give the readers recall a key point from your abstract. So we must remember that search engine and bibliographic database use abstract in addition to the title to identify key term for indexing your published paper. From these sentences, I need to participate with me. All just now inside our workshop, sometimes I ask, I hope you can discuss with me because I interest while the, our workshop or our lecture, we have inter interchange data between me and you. So I, I have one question. He say, if you see, he say, remember that search engine and bibliographic database use abstract. Okay. In addition to the title automatically, identify the key term for indexing your published paper. So can, who can tell me what is, which example, give me example about search engine or give me example about bibliographic database. If anyone can give me example of search engine or bibliographic database, okay? I can give you, doctor. Okay, can you give me, you can send by message or you can uh, try now request a mic, speak with me. Uh, give me an example about the search engine or bibliographic database. Who can give me the example? Google, uh, yeah. Maybe like Google Scholar or like uh, Springer. These are like the uh, search engines, right? Yeah, yeah. Other, other? Scopus, okay, other? Like, uh, we have Scopulos. Okay. 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 Others. We have Google Scholar. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yes. More. More. I need more. Springer. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I can't. I <laughs> can't you, actually if recall. You my screen, <laughs> if you see my screen, there's the scope as Google Scholar, Science Direct, <laughs> ETM Library. There's a web of science. You see in the screen. I have uh, all <laughs> Yes, Web of Science, they are yeah. much. Yeah. yeah. See, see, see Springer, yeah, I have all because every time I need this search engine. So while we say search engine, it means there's something try to search. Okay. So let me to explain for you small, very exact, very small. Okay. So we say we have article. Just now we have article. This article we publish it. We publish it. Where, like I published it in Scopus. Okay. Just now article is published inside that Scopus. Okay. The Scopus. The Scopus have a search engine. Oh, sorry. Who have a question? If, if you have a question, it's normal. You can ask me anytime. But if you know, please, if you can make mute your mic, maybe help us, okay? So I, if I have article, okay, I have article, publish it in Scopus. So just now the search engine, what search engine? We try what? We try save 
sorry, you try search inside saved, saved database. But how search? The search depends of the, of the word. Who can, who can tell me? The search engine will search for any article we try, we request, depend of the, our keyword, okay? Depend of the, our keyword and what? The search engine depend of the what they, they try to search. Maybe data? Huh? huh? The data that we provide with the article. They ah uh, they say he say the search about what uh, depend of abstract and title. Exactly to identify the key term for indexing your published paper. Okay. So it's very important uh, to make easy, easy find your article if you have a good, a good abstract. So what you include in your abstract and title is critical for assigning others research and finding your paper. So it's there is as a chance. It means, it means this is a abstract and title is critical for assisting other researcher. It means you have other researcher. You need to, 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 to search for an article, okay? Your article abstract and your article title will help the other researcher and sometimes make them the critical to finding your paper or your article. So it means there is a main factions of abstract. Maybe I ask you why you would like to write an abstract. Why you need to write an abstract? Exactly the good questions. Why I need to write an abstract? I need to write abstract because when completing a PhD thesis or master dissertation, I must have abstract. As a student, well, I'm PhD student or master student or maybe uh, postdoctoral, anything. Well, we have some fees, some uh, uh, project while you have a dissertation. So you must have what? You must have the abstract. So why and when I need to write an abstract when completing PhD thesis or master dissertation? And when writing a proposal for a book or sometimes book chapter, or sometimes you need to write a conference paper. Here at this time, we need to write abstract. Sometimes we need writing a journal article for publication, so we need to write abstract. And when apply for research grant, it's very important. While well, you do one of them, you must have what? You must have the abstract for PhD thesis or master, or sometimes you need to write a proposal for a book, or sometimes you need to write a book chapter or conference paper. Do you know? Well, you need to submit for conference paper directly, send, send as the title and abstract. So it's very important, your abstract. And sometimes you need to write a journal for journal article uh, for publication, and sometimes you need apply for research grant. At this time, we are need to write what? To write abstract. So it's very easy. Why should I know how to write abstract? This is important. Oh. The abstract help you present complex information in a clear, consistent manner. Help you read abstract more effectively. Help you conduct research and future publications. Help you condense, report information into short format for database search. So by this way, you must know how you to write abstract. Because if you need to easily find your article when you publish, you must have a good abstract. Sometimes if you need to, to read your paper, so if your abstract is good, so the reader try to read the other part of the, your article. 
And exactly, it helps to present complex information because maybe your article uh, 10 page, 12 page, but one paragraph, it gives complex information about your job or your project or your thesis sometimes. So what is the content of the abstract? Abstract contains the majority of the information in condensed form. Of course, the body of your paper would develop and explain this idea in greater depths. But the major information, you can condense it in the wire in the abstract. The proportion of your abstract that you devote to each type of information and the sequence of that information will vary depending on the nature and gender of the paper that you are summarizing in your abstract. In the summarizing of your paper, summarizing of your article, summarizing all your thesis, you can't put all of them inside the abstract. Here are a typical kind of information found in the most abstract. The scope of ba our background information for your research. It means inside the abstract, we have what? We have the scope of our, our background information of your research, okay? The broad topic and their consideration and the specific topic of your research, all of them inside the abstract. Crucial questions, statement of the problem your investigations focuses on, all of them must be where, must be inside the abstract. What is already known about this topic? What previous research has done or demonstrated must be you put inside your abstract. So why is it important to address these questions about the main reason? The agency, the rational and the goal of your research are you for example researching a new subject why is the subject worth investigation are you feeling a void left by previous research are you using new method to look at the old idea or data in a new way resolving disagreement in your field literature it means inside the abstract you can explain all of them with your questions, what your, what your research you need to, what's your subject, what the new subject. So which method you are using? So your study or your analytical procedure must be inside the abstract briefly, at me short. And you find in outcome, argument. What is your finding? What is your outcome? What is your argument? The significance, implications of your finding an argument must be what must be inside the abstract. You see, there is many things inside the abstract, but all of them, it is very important and deep contained of your article, of your paper, of your thesis, any one of them you can put short and briefly, summarize all of them, put inside the abstract. We have many type of abstract. Some, some sources say we have three, some sources say we have five. So let me explain five type of abstract. The abstract, we have uh, informative abstract, descriptive ab abstract, critical, highlight abstract. So however, students most often use informative abstract. It means we are used what informative abstract more, especially for PhD student or master student. With that being said, always follow the guideline dictated by your instructor or institution. It means while you need to write the abstract, you must remember while you are under the law of your university or your situations, or maybe instructor, or maybe sometimes a publisher role, you must try and, uh, and uh, understand about the requirement of the, your university to uh, arrange your abstract, depend of the, uh, your university or sometimes your uh, publisher if you need to publish an article. So the first type, we say the indicative abstract, okay? Indicative abstract, abstract state what the full paper is about. 
you see, indicative abstract status, what food paper is about. And this suitable only for what? For review paper, essay, and non-experimental study. It means non-experimental study and essay and review paper, we use what? Use indicative abstract. The second type, we have descriptive abstract. Descriptive abstract provide an overview of the content, detailing major point, and research method involved inside what? Inside descriptive abstract. Because there is a many type of abstract, as I explained before, there is a next type, is a descriptive abstract. However, contrary to the informative abstract, they do not provide significant finding, conclusion, or recommendation. Additionally, they are about maybe 100 word emails. For this reason, they are often less helpful in determining the relevance of the work when conducting research as opposite to informative abstract. So it means descriptive abstract. There is a very different with the informative abstract because sometimes we don't use all we cannot put all conclusion recommendation in one abstract. So informative abstract, informative abstract detail the background, major point, research method, significant finding. Uh, you see, significant finding, conclusion, reach, any recommendation. All of them were, all of them included in what? In informative abstract. So that the readers understand the main element of the paper before delivering further. These paragraphs are typically maybe 250 words in length, although this can vary based on discipline. So informative abstract, about 250 words. And inside the informative abstract, you have a background, you have a major point, research method, significant finding, conclusion, and recommendations. So outside of informative abstract, all the different disciplines may require distinct information. Informative abstract follow this outline. You have the first one, background, and purpose of the paper reporting. Why? What's this topic research? Why should people care about your paper? You put inside the abstract, this is important things. Background and purpose of your paper. So main argument or thesis point, you can put in the informative abstract, this research method and approach usage. Research method approach usage inside the informatic abstract you can write with. Significant finding and result found and how they may contribute to the overall discussions surrounding the topic. So this for main required distinct you can put inside the informative abstract. So sometimes we say the uh, informative abstract, it's, it is need to be 250 words. Because we say the abstract sometime from 150 to 300. Zero, zero. But some sort, we say sometime you can write 500 words. Some of sort, we say only one paragraph, okay? But some other sort, we say no, you can make more than one paragraph. Generally, the abstract Generally, the abstract no have any citation, but some 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 sorry say so you can put sometimes citation, especially if it depends on the external data from your article. So anyway, the informative abstract it is the important type of our general type in abstract. The third type is critical abstract. Critical abstract evaluate or and offer analysis or the paper finding and provide an overview of the paper. You see, this critical abstract is different from the other abstract because why? Because you see, finding and provide an overview of the paper. These abstracts are typically longer, extending to about 400 or 500 words. Because of the analytically commentary further they can refer to outside information and compare and contrast, which informative and descriptive abstract 
do not include it. In the descriptive and abstract or informative abstract, do not include this, but in the critical abstract, we have a view, we are finding and providing a view of the paper. We can put inside of the critical abstract because there is evaluate and offer analysis. Highlight abstract. Highlight abstract are infrequently used to academia because they are meant to grasp the reader's attention, to read, work more, so that can act as a standalone of a view. Reader might not receive the full picture of the purpose and might just find in the text, which means highlight abstract. Sometimes the reader cannot find a full understanding or full picture about your article. So well, we say this highlight abstract, only it means highlighting some things, not all. But the critical abstract has more. There's analysis, there's evaluating, there is a critical abstract. So while we say informative, the informative there is a full information about your article. Evaluate abstract, also known as a critical abstract, are sub subjective. They evaluate content of the article or publication. These are the main type of the uh, abstract. These are the main type of the abstract. <laughs>